Is the British pound heading much higher against the Canadian dollar? What if I told you it could move 600 pips higher from today's price as long as this area holds as support? Hi everyone, my name is Justin Bennett with Daily Price Action. And in today's video, we're gonna talk about the pound versus the Canadian dollar. We're gonna talk about some key levels as well as how high this thing could go as long as support holds. Let's get to it right now. Before we get started with today's video on the pound versus the Canadian dollar, be sure to hit that subscribe button below and click the bell icon so you get notified every time I post these videos. So for those of you who saw Saturday's forecast video, this chart should look familiar because I talked about the pound versus the CAD and I said that as long as 162.50 holds as support that we could see the pair move higher, perhaps back to 64.30. I also said that as long as 162.50 holds on a daily closing basis, which it has so far, that this inverse head and shoulders pattern is still intact. So remember, I first wrote about this on the blog back when the pair was trading through this area. In fact, I even wrote about it right here on this candle right before we got this massive 300 pip rally. And so far, the pair is retesting that level as new support. So in some cases, you'll get an inverse head and shoulders that breaks out, say this candle breaks out here and then you get an immediate retest and then the move higher. However, in this case, it has taken the GBP CAD about two weeks to move up to 166, rotate lower and come into this neckline, which is now serving as support. So again, this neckline of the inverse head and shoulders was serving as resistance back through these highs and notice how so far this week, it's serving as support. Now, the key to a move higher, at least in my opinion, is whether or not the pair can close above these highs from earlier this week. So notice how these two highs right here actually line up with a key level. All right, so if I draw my horizontal level here, notice how we have several lows all the way back here. We also have highs and then this candle's high right here, as well as this week. So this area right around 163.30, maybe 163.35, needs to break on a daily closing basis. So if we see today's candle right here, if we see it close above this 163.35 area, then I do think that could act as support and push the GBP CAD up toward that 164.30 resistance area. So notice that we have several highs, and then it acted as support following this 330 pip breakout. So how high could this thing go? So let's talk about the upside potential here for a second, and then I'll get into what might negate a bullish move from the pound versus the Canadian dollar. Okay, so first things first, as I mentioned, I think a close today above 163.35 could push the pair higher up into 164.30. And if we get a close above that level, then I do think we could see the pair head back toward 166. So notice where this is actually where the pair stalled out last time. And 166 was also a key level we had our eye on following this break from the neckline area. So I think 166 could be a target if the pair can get above 164.30. And also keep in mind that the measured objective here, so the height of this pattern is about 500, maybe 515 pips. If we measure higher from this breakout point, so 500 pips higher gives us a target right up around 168. So 168 area up in this region, and, and notice how we have some activity back here too. We have some lows and highs. So 168 is the measured objective for this inverse head and shoulders pattern. Now that doesn't mean that the pair will reach this area. It doesn't even mean that the pair will reach 166 or even 164.30. However, those are the targets I'm looking at as long as buyers can get behind today's rally. But there's also another pattern at play. And for that, we're gonna use the channel tool. Now I don't normally do this. However, you're gonna notice in a second, once I draw this pattern, you're gonna notice how accurate it is. So notice how I've drawn from this 
upper wick as well as this lower wick. And I'm going to, I'm going to point these out in a moment. Um, okay. So notice how we have this low, we have this high that make up the upper level. And if I drag the support level down, we have this swing low as well as this swing low from today. Normally I wouldn't draw a channel in this fashion where I'm using a swing low like this as the start of the pattern. But in this case, I mean, notice how accurate this is. This is literally within a couple of pips on each of these highs and lows. So this right here between this neckline, okay? So remember, this was the neckline, it was acting as resistance. It broke out on this candle, which means it's now serving as support. We also have this ascending channel support that intersect right around 162.30. And what that means is that even if today fails to hold above 163.30, so even if we get a rotation lower into this 162.30 area, I'm still gonna, I'm, I still have to respect the bullish potential from the pound against the Canadian dollar as long as this 162.30 confluence of support is intact. All right, so. You know, even if we get a rotation lower, this is not to say that the pair is going to move higher directly from where it is today, where it is right now, because we could still get a rotation lower into this confluence of support. And as long as this holds on a daily closing basis, I have to respect the potential for a move higher. Now, remember that 168 was the measured objective for this inverse head and shoulders. So again, inverse head and shoulders pattern, and 168 up here is the measured objective. However, now that we have this ascending channel in front of us, it does give me reason to think that if buyers can get behind this move, that we could see a move above 168. And the reason for that is notice what's happened since the pair has been inside this channel. So we had essentially this move down here to support, the pair rallied up to this level, which gave us this upper level on the channel, it's now come back to retest channel support. So naturally, if buyer, again, if buyers can get it behind this, we could see the pound against the Canadian dollar move up into this 169.60 region toward the middle to maybe last week of October. Now, of course, it's not gonna move in a straight line. So we could see the pair close above 163.30 today, move up to retest 64.30, close above that, come back and retest, you know, move up and retest 166, consolidate some, break that, move up. So you get the idea. It's not gonna be in a straight line. We could see a lot of chops and consolidation, um, but I do think there is a potential for a move above 168 just based on this ascending channel. Okay, so right now though, 164.30 is resistance, 166, is resistance. The measured objective is up around 168 with a break there exposing 169.60. That's all good and well, but as you know, there are no guarantees in this business. So this next part is probably the most important part of this video. And that is what could negate the bullish outlook. All right, we know that nothing is for sure. And as nice as this looks, okay, and as nice as much as we'd wanna buy this and get long and see a move of 600 pips or more, we also know that there are no guarantees. So if this 162.30 confluence of support that I mentioned, if that breaks down, so if the pound versus the CAD comes down here and closes below that area, then in my opinion, the bullish outlook is negated. Okay, so it would cancel out all of this. And it would also likely expose this low back here and perhaps even this year to date low. So the bottom line is that 162.30 needs to hold as support in order for this bullish potential to materialize. If we see a close, a daily close, remember that I use New York close charts so that every 24 hour session opens and closes at 5 p.m. Eastern. So that means that the pair needs to stay above 162.30 on a daily closing basis, meaning that 5 p.m. Eastern close 
in order for this bullish outlook to stay intact. Last but not least, I think it's important to keep the broader picture in mind as well, especially when you're position sizing, because the fact is the pound against the Canadian dollar has been in a downtrend for some time. So if I scale out or if I move out here on the daily time frame, this thing has been trending lower for quite some time. So this may just be a correction within this broader impulsive downtrend. So even though we could see the pound move higher against the Canadian dollar, this does not mean that the pair is all of a sudden bullish over the long term. Short term, I think we could see a move higher, but longer term, as of right now, this thing is still in a downtrend. And that's important to keep in mind when you're position sizing because you don't wanna go in with a full position size, at least I don't wanna do that, in a market that is trending against me. So in this case, the trend is not your friend, so it may be best to go ahead and scale in along the way. In other words, if the pound against the Canadian dollar starts to break 163.30, starts to break 164.30, moving up to 166. These are all levels where you could potentially scale into a long position. So instead of risking two or 3% right off the bat, why not risk a half a percent or 1% as this thing moves higher? That way, if this thing does crash back down, because remember, the trend here is still bearish. If it does end up crashing and breaking through 162.50, you're not in this thing with a full position size. Okay, so your average rate may not be as good if you scale in along the way, but you're gonna save yourself the headache if this bearish trend does take over again and negate this bullish potential. So just to summarize quickly, as long as 162.30 is intact as support on a daily closing basis, I favor a move higher from the pound against the Canadian dollar. If 162.30 breaks, so if we get a close below this level, it would negate the bullish outlook and re-expose some of these lows from August and September. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, leave your comment below and be sure to subscribe to my channel. See you next time.